get back to the situation in Medina to Munawwara. Now Quraysh, they started understanding and realizing what has happened. Mecca to Mukarramah was empty. They had no one to, to poke. Basically, they had no one to harm. They had no one to actually uh, make life difficult for. So what did they do? They wrote a letter. Who should they write to? Because now the, the leader of Medina, Medina to Munawwara, is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you recall, we made mention of a man who was about to be appointed as the leader. His name was Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul. Quraysh wrote a letter to him and told him a few words. That look, you have given asylum to a wanted man who is wanted by us. If you do not hand him over to us, we are coming with a huge army to wipe you out. Basically, these were the words. We are coming with a huge army. We're going to fight your men and we're going to enslave and capture your women. That's what we are going to do. So when Salul got this letter, he was very happy in a way because to him, he said, let me make a big noise about it so that I can get Muhammad sallallahu out so that I can be the leader once again. But as soon as he started making a noise within certain circles, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam being informed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what did he do? He got up and went to Salul and his people and said, you have overreacted regarding the letter that came from Quraysh. You have overreacted. Do not overreact to it. This teaches us a lesson. Sometimes something small, we don't understand. We overreact. We get very excited about things. So we make a mountain, as I always say, from a little molehill, a big mountain. And yet, if we had asked those who had had knowledge and we asked those with experience, they would tell you, brother, just ignore this. Don't worry. It's minor. It's small. Just leave it. Allahu Akbar. We have to face negativity in life. No one can say, I have a smooth life with no negativity. Because then, what was the point of Jannah? Paradise. Paradise is going to be a place where there will only be positives, no negatives. If, if the worldly life was the same, then what was the point of going to paradise? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deeper understanding. And so when they wrote this letter and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then reacted upon the reaction of Salul, things started coming down. But the whispering was still on. No, you see these people are going to come and attack us. In the meantime, something else had happened. Sa'd ibn Mu'ad, who was one of the leaders of Al-Aws, as we have made mention of, and a Sahabi, he went for Umrah. And this was the habit of the people at the time. Now this man had gone to Mecca to Al-Mukarramah, and he was a Muslim. When he went there, Abu Jahl, in fact, he stayed with Umayyah ibn Khalaf. That was a person whom he stayed with. And Umayyah ibn Khalaf, these people used to pass Medina Munawwara on their way to Asham, to the northern Arabian region. And when they used to take their caravans, they used to pass Medina Munawwara and wait for a while. And thereafter, when Sa'd ibn Mu'adh went to Mecca to Mukarramah, as he is making tawaf, Abu Jahl asks him or asks Umayyah ibn Khalaf, who is this man? He says, this is Sa'd. Sa'd meaning the one from Yathrib, the one from Medina. He says, oh, if you were not with this man, I would have stopped you and blocked you. You would not have returned back to your people. You have given asylum to a wanted man. Look at the same statement from the same people coming again to a different person. You have given asylum to a wanted man. You have given him a base and you are protecting a person who is wanted. We would block you and stop you. At this point, Sa'd ibn Mu'adh said very loudly, if you try to do anything, you will be blocked from going up to Asham. All your caravans, we will stop them, block them, and you will have to go back. Your trade route will be over, closed. Your business, gone. Now they were worried. They had to keep quiet once again. But they knew that now the mushriks of Mecca are preparing war against the believers who are in Medina Munawwara. There were many still in Mecca. And the mu'mineen, they were not so many. There was a head count done of the people who were able to participate in war if war broke out. And 1,500 men were counted at that time in Medina Munawwara. So that was the population of the men and the, the boys, or should I say the young men and the older people who were fit to fight. 1,500 people. And so Quraysh knew that they had large numbers. But subhanallah, 
whilst they were preparing. On this side, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was visiting different tribes and he was visiting different areas around Medina Munawwara, signing treaties with the people to say, look, we are the Muslims, we are a nation, new nation. We are going to protect you if anything happens to you. And if an army comes to attack us, we will fight together. Subhanallah. So this was just an agreement that was struck and more and more little groups of people and little clans were joining and more and more areas were joining the Muslim forces. In the meantime, something amazing happened. The Prophet ﷺ used to have bodyguards around him. The Sahaba radiallahu anhum did not leave him. They had bodyguards around him so much so that once he speaks about how he had such a good sleep when Sa'ad <clears throat> ibn Abi Waqqas radiallahu anhu was standing guarding him. Until Allah revealed verses where Allah says, Ya ayyuhal rasoolu ballighu ma unzila ilayka min rabbik wa in lam taf'al fama ballaghta risalatah Wallahu ya'asimuka minan nas Inna Allah la yahdi al-qawm al-kafirin O Messenger, get up and convey the message. If you don't do so, you will not have fulfilled your duty. And remember, Allah will protect you from the people. When those verses were revealed, he immediately told those who used to stand around him, you can go away. Allah has guaranteed my safety, my protection, subhanallah. So the hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, making mention of those who used to stand around him, this was only to the point where the verses were revealed, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed verses that, I will protect you. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam instructed those who used to stand around him to leave. And this is when sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they knew that he is protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing will ever harm him except and until the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has willed it. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, at that time verses were revealed to him, which were very, very important because Quraysh, they had a bad habit. They began to visit Medina Munawwara quietly and they used to try and inculcate in the hearts and minds of the people that you know this man is like this and like that and they were causing problems. On one hand you had Ubay ibn Salul, Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul. He had his group of people. They were visiting the mu'mineen and the believers. You know the, those who had believed uh, newly and they were trying to distract them and find fault in Islam and so on and as for the Jewish people there was a treaty with them but still deep down they used to support Ubay ibn Salul anything that happens they would quickly support him so that they tried to create problems in the midst of the Muslims but Allah protected the Muslim and then Allah revealed verses up to that stage Muslims were not allowed to fight no re retaliate no revenge and they weren't even allowed to defend if someone had usurped their wealth they had to just go away up to that point there allah revealed verses <laughs> permission has been granted to those who are being fought to defend themselves and to revenge and retaliate. For indeed Allah is all able to grant them victory. These verses brought a smile on the faces of the believers. Their wealth was usurped, their properties usurped, their people were killed, they were driven out of their homes and the mushrik still did not leave them alone. They wanted to come to Medina to attack them. Now they were granted permission to defend and to revenge. Revenge meaning you were booted out, you can go back and you can boot them out and you can take back whatever was taken from you. Whatever was taken from you, you can take it back. And at the same time, anyone tries to harm you now, you don't sit back. You can actually revenge. Subhanallah. You can defend yourself. And that is the right. It's a, it's a common right that we have. If anyone wants to attack you or me today with whatever I have, I need to stand up and make sure I defend myself. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection.
So when these verses were revealed, Quraysh, the Prophet wasallam, started in an amazing way finding out information and getting to know the place, getting to know more about Quraysh, preparing to attack. Why preparing to attack? Very simple. This attack was not an attack to spread Islam as people think it was. No. It was to go back to Quraysh who killed from amongst us and go back to Quraysh who had usurped our wealth and our properties and driven us out of our own homes. We need to go back and get it because even the wealth that they have is contaminated with ours and whatever belonged to us. Subhanallah. So anytime there were caravans that moved north towards the Syrian region, what was known as Asham, it was the right of the Muslims to waylay the caravan and to take every bit of property because all that belonged to the Muslimin. It was usurped from them. Subhanallah. So this was revenge. It was retaliation for what you did for the last 14 years. For the last 14 years, you harmed us, you attacked us, you killed us, you did this, you did that. And now we are just allowed to defend. So the Prophet ﷺ started sending little platoons and reconnaissance missions of a few of his companions. And he sent them into different directions. We want to start off making mention of some of them. But before I do that, fighting came down in four stages. First, only Quraysh were allowed to be fought. Nobody else. So at this stage, when these verses were revealed, the Muslims were only allowed to fight Quraysh, no one else. Then slightly later, they were permitted to fight thereafter the Mushriks from amongst the Arabs who fought them. The Mushriks from amongst the Arabs who fought them. And thereafter, anyone who sided with Quraysh in their war was also fought by the Muslimin, even if they were people of the book who broke their treaties with the Muslims. And the last category, those who started war, anyone who started fighting, we were allowed to go back, retaliate. And at the same time, we could revenge, we could fight them, preparing an army and go back to attack them. Like, for example, there were instances where the messenger of the Prophet ﷺ was harmed and was killed. He sent a whole army to fight those people. Why did you kill our messenger? Who are you? So you started the war, not us. And this is what happened. So Rasulullah ﷺ, the first platoon that he sent, he was not a part of it. But in Ramadan, in the first year of Hijrah, he sent what is known as Sariyat Saif al-Bahar. Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib was sent with 30 men only to find out information, to gather intelligence. The idea was to gather intelligence. This is what it was. These people were not warriors as such. The Muslims were calm people, but they had to learn and they started gathering information. So when Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib was sent towards a place known as Saif al-Bahr with 30 men in order to see and to check the caravan of Abu Jahl, that was returning from Asham, that had had 300 strong men. So now Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib went with 30 men. As they went, they got there, they saw the caravan, and now the two parties came together. And obviously two hostile parties coming together face to face. There was a man known as Majdi ibn Amr, and he had had a treaty with both sides. So he got up and he said, you know what? No fighting here. We don't want to fight. You people go back and you people go back. We don't want any war and any, any fighting. So Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib came back to al Madinah al munawwara and Abu Jahl went safely to Mecca al Mukarramah. But it did something. He went back to Mecca and he was worried that these people are brave. They are powerful. For the first time, they are preparing some retaliation. So it sent a very strong message, although it was mainly to gather a little bit of intelligence. The first flag that was lifted by the Muslimin, you see, every time there was an army, they had had a flag. The flags were mainly white. So this flag was by Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam given to Hamza radiallahu an, and he had given it to one of the members of the army. It was a white flag. It was a little platoon. They had gone, as we made mention, just thirty men. The second. 
uh, little skirmish that took place, or we call it a little platoon, a sariya, something, a, a small reconnaissance mission in order to gather a little bit of uh, intelligence. It was what known as Sariyat Rabir, which was also in Shawwal in the same year, first year of Hijrah. And the leader was Ubaidah ibn al-Harith radiallahu anhu. He went with 60 men in order to check the caravan of Abu Sufyan that was a much bigger caravan that was coming with 200 men. But it had a lot of wealth and it had a lot of uh, merchandise. So the two met and they threw spears at each other. But this one fled and the other one came back to al Madinah al munawwara There was no killing as such. There were just a few spears and arrows that had uh, flown from one direction to the other and from the other direction to this. And from Abu Sufyan's little group of people, two of them came into the Muslim camp and returned to Madinah Munawwara. They were Muslims already, but they had joined the caravan going on business with the idea of making the hijrah undercover. You see, hijrah was not easy. So if someone wants to make hijrah, it's like sometimes, you know, we have... Let me give you a simple example come to my mind now. You have, for example, something going on, a religious function going on somewhere. And a person really needs to do a bit of business there or something. And you find a man saying, you know what, I want to go to the religious function. He jumps in, he gets a free lift. When he goes there, he's doing something else. This example was the other way around, where these people were going for business and the Muslims, two of them, jumped in with them, saying that, you know what, we're coming. Not making mention that we want to jump off in Medina Munawwara. It so happened that this platoon had met them and they returned with the Muslimin, subhanallah. The third little platoon that had gone out, Sariyatul Kharrar, and that was in Dhul Qidah of the first year of Hijrah, Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas went with 20 men and he had also aimed for the caravan of Quraysh. Why were they aiming for caravans of Quraysh? As I said, because that wealth was ours. That wealth was contaminated. These people stole our wealth. They had stolen our properties. They had benefited so much. They drove us out of our own homes. Anything we could get hold of belonged to us. They had fought us. We need to go back. So this is why Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas anhu went and as he got to the place that he had supposed to go, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa told him not to go beyond that. So when he got there, he found out that the caravan has already passed. So he came back. But there was another benefit of all these little platoons going out. They gathered lots of information about the areas, the places. They understood the outskirts of Medina, the path, the roads. And they also started gathering how Quraysh move, uh, move, the movements, how much they take when they go, when they come and so on. All this was intelligence being gathered. A lot of benefit by these little uh, platoons that were going uh, out. We have then the first time that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself went out was in the month of Safar, in the second year of Hijrah. He went out what was known as Ghazwa. Ghazwa is like a skirmish or a battle. It could refer to a battle if there is fighting that takes place. And sometimes it's just a skirmish because the two armies may not have fought or the two parties may not have actually clashed. So Ghazwa al Abuwa, that's the name of the first uh, group of uh, army men that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa went with. He prepared this army and he walked with them. He went with them as their leader. And it was also referred to in some books as Al-Widdan, Ghazwat Widdan. So Al-Abwa, you hear the name and you also hear the name Widdan. In Safar, the second year of Hijrah, the Prophet wasallam took 70 men, all of them from amongst the Muhajireen. And he also aimed for Quraysh and the caravan that was coming back. But he had not met the caravan and there was no fighting that took place. He spent 15 days out. And he had had a flag that Hamza radiallahu anhu was holding and the flag was white. And when he left Medina Munawwara, one might ask, who did he leave behind as a leader there? He left behind Sa'd ibn Ubadah radiallahu anhu the first time he went out. And that was the first participation of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa No war had taken place. Then you have the second participation was known as Buwat. Ghazwat Buwat. The reason I'm making mention of all this, many of us think that Badr was the first war. The reality is no, there were so many skirmishes before that. 
and one thing led to another and the battle of Badr was only after certain things had happened and how did they happen we will come to it inshallah in a few moments you have Buat in Rabi' al-Awwal second year of Hijrah Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went out with 200 men and Umayyah ibn Khalaf was coming back from Asham with 100 men but sadly they had already passed the caravan. So they learned a lot. They went to the, these areas. They met the people every time they were coming back. Like the first one, Al Abwa, when the Prophet ﷺ was coming back, he took a lot of time to visit the tribes, to visit the people, to meet them, to spread the word. Some may enter Islam, but more importantly, a lot of peace treaties were agreed upon between the parties because what you find. When there is peace thereafter, Islam spreads. And in this particular case, there was so much peace. So many of these little clans and groups started joining the forces with the Muslimin and pledging allegiance to them, especially a, a peace treaty that was struck between the parties. Then what had happened is something known as Ghazwa to Badr in Sughra, the battle of Badr, but the small one, the minor one. It's not, not the main battle that we all know. It was a skirmish in a place known as Safwan. And this place, what had happened is the Prophet ﷺ in Rabi' al-Awwal in the second year of Hijrah went out with 70 men. And why did he go out? Very important. There was a man called Karz ibn Jabir al-Fihri. He had come in with a few men to Medina Munawwara and he went into the farms and he stole some of the sheep and he stole a little bit of the property and he was rushing back when he rushed back announcement was made in Medina that this is what happened the Prophet Sallallahu gathered 70 men and he went after this man in order to retrieve and to get back what he had stolen from Medina Munawwara subhanallah so this was the reason why he had gone and they had gone to this place of Sifwan which was very very close to Badr in fact it is also called a part of Badr and when he got there, subhanallah, uh, this person had already skirmished and he had run away and there was nothing much that could have happened. But the beauty is the area of Badr was already seen and everything that happens around there was already known. So when they went to Badr after that, they already had known what Badr was all about and they were acquainted with a lot of the areas close to Badr. And then we had a war where the Prophet Sallallahu took part in which was known as Dil Ashira. And this Dil Ashira was in Rabi' al-Awwal in the second year of Hijrah. The Prophet Sallallahu in fact, they had intended to gather information of the caravan of Quraysh that was heading north. And they found that they had missed it. They calculated when it would return. This caravan of Abu Sufyan this caravan of Abu Sufyan and what they did is on its return this is when the major battle took place subhanallah so they calculated we missed it going up but when it comes back we're going to get it why because what it had in it was a lot they had a lot of merchandise so much that the Muslims did not want to lose out on what was rightfully theirs subhanallah it was returning what was theirs to them. So the Prophet ﷺ thereafter uh, prepared an army. And that would be the army which finally took part in the battle known as the Battle of Badr, the main battle that we all know. But before we get to that particular battle, there were two or three things that happened in Medina Munawwara. One is, before the Battle of Badr, the direction of the Qibla changed. So Allah instructed his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa 16 months, 16 to 17 months after he had come to Medina Munawwara that we are seeing that you are looking for the direction in prayer and we are instructing you to now face Makkatul Mukarrama. So at that juncture, the verses were revealed. فَوَلِّ وَجَهَكَ شَطُرَ الْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ Turn your face towards Al Masjid Al Haram in Makkah Al Mukarramah and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made the Qibla 
it was almost, if you go to Medina Munawara, it's almost 180 degrees. So it's like a straight line. If you're facing this way, you now face the other way. Almost 180. So he had made the mimbar in the other direction. What happened to the old mimbar? That area was given a little bit of a roof and it was raised slightly and it was known as a suffa. A suffa meaning an area where the poor and those who don't have much, those who don't have a place to go, or the muhajirin who were still coming in, they would actually settle there for a while and stay and spend a lot of their time in ibadah and learning the religion and sacrificing for the pleasure of Allah. Inshallah, we will get to that at some stage. But this area was known as as suffa It now became the back of the masjid, yet it used to be the front of the masjid when the qibla was in the other direction. So this is one thing that had happened. One of the beauties or one of the beautiful points of the changing of the Qibla was that the, the Muslims wanted to liberate their own home city of Mecca. It was their city. They were most of them were born in there. The Muhajirin, almost all of them, besides a few, were born in Mecca. And now they were facing Mecca. Allah explained to them the, the value of this house of Mecca aforetime. And now they were facing that direction. How could they face the direction of a place that is in the hands of their enemies? So it gave them all the more reason to want to go and be victorious in Makkah al-Mukarramah. You see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made their hearts inclined towards going back and getting whatever belonged to them. Subhanallah. So this was one of the reasons of or one of the benefits of the change of the Qibla. After that, in the same year in Sha'ban, fasting was prescribed oh you who believe fasting is prescribed upon you in the same way it was prescribed upon those before you in order that you may achieve piety verses were revealed and mashallah in the month of ramadan they fasted for the first time and in the same month of ramadan the battle of badr took place in the month of ramadan 14 years after being driven out of their homes 17th of in fact 14 years after revelation and prophethood you now find these people were given the opportunity to face those who had persecuted them for so long also what was made compulsory in the same year was sadaqatul fitr what we know when we are opening our fast at the end of ramadan and we need to give out what is known as the fitr that was made uh, it was prescribed also in the second year of hijrah and zakah became compulsory just after the month of Ramadan. This battle of Badr. The Prophet wasallam sent Talha ibn Ubaidillah and Sa'id ibn Zayd towards the north in order to gather information of the caravan of Abu Sufyan that had gone up north. And these people, they passed by Abu Sufyan and they saw him. So they quickly sent a message to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam in Medina Munawwara saying this man is on his return. He is now coming back with him are 40 men, 1000 camels and 50,000 dinars, which means he has a lot. Subhanallah. He has so much and a lot of merchandise. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam made an announcement in Medina Munawwara and that announcement was who is ready to go out in order to face Quraysh, they are coming back with their caravan and we are going to face them. At that particular time, it was not compulsory for all of them to go out. Just like they went to face the previous uh, caravans where they were not really very successful. This was also one of those. They did not intend a full fledged war. They only intended to get part of the merchandise from the caravan that was returning. And so you find people started giving their names and people were being vetted. What is the meaning of vetted? Vetted meaning some people are known that this person's condition is good. He can come. Some people, they had certain matters that disallowed them from joining the battle. One of them was Uthman ibn Affan. Anh. He was disallowed from joining the battle because his wife was ill and sick. The daughter of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ruqayya radiallahu anha. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So this was a major battle, the decisive battle, the first major battle. 
And yet you have the Prophet وسلم, telling certain people that go back and serve your parents. And certain people go back and serve your, meaning look after your family members. Because that is compulsory upon you as a person. And this here, it's compulsory upon us collectively. So if some of us go, the rest of us will not be penalized. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. The statement I have made is very important. We learn from this that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had a system in place from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it worked like clockwork and it resulted in the fact that today we are sitting in this masjid subhanallah so inshallah we will be going through the battle of Badr in detail starting from tomorrow we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us benefit until we meet again sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina muhammad subhanallah bihamdih subhanakallahumma bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk Experience the beauty of Islam and bring happiness into your life with our app One Islam TV. You will have access to a wide variety of interesting documentaries, inspiring lectures, and so much more. Download One Islam TV from the Apple or Google Play Store today. Ooh, ooh.